up until this point, but getting out of the Kyoto station, there were no escalators going up. So it was all stairs with big luggage. So now I understand why people say you want to have a small luggage whenever you're traveling throughout Japan. We didn't really have any issues, and I'm like, yeah, I can, I can carry some luggage. We were good all, up until this point. But once you get out, you're good. Put in the act of it. As long as it's not too hot, you're good. It was hot down there. <laughs> to our hotel it's the Kyoto Grand Bell so here's a quick little room tour it's a nice cute mix between traditional and modern you gotta take your shoes off before getting in my shoes are still on so I'm not gonna be walking up there yet but here's the bathroom it's super nice everything seems to be really updated in this hotel the lobbies the rooms the bathrooms Super nice. I'm really excited to just jump on in. And then we got a view, sort of, of a parking lot. Hey, that's a great view, so. All right, so we just got to Kyoto, just checked into the room, and we're gonna go out and explore a little bit, see what we can find. Maybe some yummy treats. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Okay. All right, our first savory treat of the night. First savory treat of the night? Dango. So hot. Mmm. Mm. Smoky. Mm, good. Like a barbecue smoky flavor. A little soy sauce in there. We have the pork dumplings and then we have the prawn dumplings in the green. But I'm ready to dive into this. Oh mm. wow! Did not realize there was going to be broth in there. It squirt out everywhere. Yeah. But man, it's good. The outside is actually more of like a. Um, like a like a breading, more like a bao, baozi, as opposed to like a dumpling skin, so it's a little thicker. All right, but this prawn one is really good. Take a look at that. You can see the pork and the shrimp inside, nice and juicy from all that broth. Mmm. And then crispy from the skin on the outside, you can see, as I pan fry it top side down. So oh, good. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> A few inches later. Alright, so I twisted my luck at this one. And I got really close, but this still wasn't the one. This wasn't the one. I'll get you slow poke before I leave. I'll get you. We're now at the Fushiminari Shrine. Steven, give us some facts. So the Fushiminari Shrine is one of the largest shrines in Japan and is considered a world heritage site and was first established in 711 AD. Mm. 1300 years old, that is insane. Mm. Too old, too old. Now we're gonna explore and see what we can find. Mm. Unfortunately, we got here a little bit late, so now there's ton of people around. I would suggest probably coming here a little bit earlier in the morning if you want to avoid the crowds. Before you go into a shrine, you're supposed to wash your hands to cleanse your mind, body, and soul before you converse with the gods. I'm clean now. So here at Fushimi Inari, there's over 10,000 Tori gates. That's a lot of gates. The individuals and businesses will donate a gate to the shrine in order to bring themselves good luck and prosperity. So we decided we're not gonna go all the way to the top. It's 233 meters to the top, so you're gonna be hiking up there for like an hour or so. So we just walked maybe 20, 30 minutes, and now we're gonna walk back down. We didn't make it to the top, but we got close. All along shrines of Japan, you can see Inari foxes, otherwise known as kitsunes, and their job is to ward off evil spirits and be guardians of the shrines. And so next to the Fushimi Inari shrine, they got all these food stalls, so we're going to grab a couple things. First thing we have is a 10 yen coin. Ironically, 10 yen coins is actually 500 yen. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of scam is that? Cheap scam. <laughs> oh man, look at that cheese drag. Mm. <laughs> Can't even get rid of it. Mm. You're going to have to buy it off somehow. Oh, freedom. <laughs> How's it taste? It's like cheese inside of a pancake. It's because it's sweet on the outside? Yeah, it's sweet. That's good. I actually would have expected them to be like a more of a salty outside com no. combined with the cheese. Sweet outside, like a pancake. Yeah. And then the cheesy mozzarella on the inside. Mm. Can't go wrong with cheese. Okay. So we got some takoyaki and some octopus ball. Paid about 500 yen for it, which is about a little over three US dollars. So here we go, we're gonna take a bite of this molten, oh my gosh, it looks so hot. Molten takoyaki. Oh, hot, hot. Mm. Mmm, that's really local. The texture of these are, I feel like it would freak some people out, but I love them. They're like gooey and like moist on the inside, but they have like the chewy textures of the octopus on the inside. Super, super delicious. I 
craving some potatoes. So we got some uh, potato swivels? Spirals? Spirals, there, there we go. So it's pretty much just a french fry, a very long french fry. So. Or it's like, it's like that or like a fried potato chip essentially. Fried potato chip, yeah, there we go. And this was also only 500 yen, which is about a little over three US dollars. So here we go. Mm. It's a potato chip. More of like a french fry though because it's soft on the inside. Soft on the inside. Nice. So delicious. I've been craving some potatoes. Next up, we got a Wagyu beef skewer. It was about 1,000 yen, which is about 6 US dollars. And uh, smells pretty good. Oh. Mm. Super juicy, tender. It's got a smokiness from the grill. Delicious. Next up, we got a crab leg. Also 500 yen. Put a little chili pepper and soy sauce on it. And you get some chopsticks to eat it with. But dang, that is a fatty, meaty boy. I've never had so much crab in just one piece before. <laughs> it tastes so good. I love crab meat. And I'm never able to eat a lot of it. Because you know whenever you go, you go to buffets and they get the crab legs on the table. They're small legs and you gotta crack them open and you only get like this much meat. Let me get a bite of this bad boy. Mm. Mm. It's so buttery smooth. And such a fat piece of meat for three dollars. And with the soy sauce, the chili flakes. I mean, this is perfect. Wow. I can't believe how, how affordable it is. It's crazy. You just eat, eat like 20 of these. Got to wash things down. We got a matcha slush with matcha and vanilla soft serve swirl on top. This one was 650 yen. So, we're going to dig right in. exactly what you need. I already knew it was going to be a thing, but honestly, the matcha in Japan is so, so delicious. Like, it actually tastes like matcha. In the United States, when they get matcha, I think it's because they only put like a little bit in there, but it's kind of watered down usually. But, oh my gosh, it's so fragrant and so mellow with that, you know, the, uh, the nice mellow flavors of matcha. But it's so delicious, like you could actually taste it. It actually tastes like matcha. Weird, right? But we just finished Fushimi Inari and now we're on our way to Kiyomi Hujera. So we just arrived at Kiyomi Hujera and man, it is a walk up. It's like a 35 minute walk. It's a tough one. If this was summertime, I'd be sweating my butt off. We are now at Kiyomi Tajera, which name literally means Temple of Pure Water Spring. This is one of the most famous Buddhist temples in Japan, founded in 780, 1300 years ago. It is most popular for its three-story viewing platform that looks over Kyoto. So we just left Kiyomi Zudera, but we will be back. We were looking around for some uh, kimono rentals, but it's kind of getting too late in the day. And it takes about an hour to an hour and a half in order to put on all the, all the attire and then also to do the woman's hair. Mm -hmm. so, so as soon as we put it on, we would have had to take it off and return it because we had to return the rentals by six. And we got there at like five. Yeah. So. We'll be back uh, sometime within the next couple of days. But uh, for now, 
we are going back to the hotel. We're gonna grab our jackets because it's getting really cold out. And then we're gonna go get some dinner. <laughs> That ramen was super delicious. Mm -hmm. And now we are at Toji Temple. They have a little um, kind of night sort, sort of event going on right now. We actually found it on TikTok, funnily <laughs> enough. But it's kind of low key. There's not really that many people here and it's beautiful right now. Mm -hmm. Tochi Temple was first established in 796 and was one of the only three Buddhist temples in Kyoto at the time. This temple is considered a world heritage site and is a historic monument of ancient Kyoto. Behind me is Toji Gotunoto. Standing at 57 meters tall, it is the tallest wooden pagoda in Japan. It's a pretty cool attraction. You know, it's only a thousand yen, so about 650-ish. Really cool to walk around the grounds and see all the Buddhist temples. Good morning, guys. We are now at Arashiyama Station. It is a very wet and rainy day. First rainy day we've encountered while in Japan. Uh, we had to go to Family Mart and get some emergency umbrellas. And now we're at Arashiyama Station, and we had to start with a little... Uh, Matcha creme brulee donut for breakfast. <laughs> as soon as we got off the train, it was literally the first stall right by the front door. So we're like, all right, Why not? it's there. <laughs> Choking on that matcha powder. <laughs> I breathed in the matcha powder <laughs> as I went in. But holy crap. All the flavors are so delicious. And they just melt together and complement each other. I'm a believer. I like this. This is 10 out of 10. Really good. Just I wish it wasn't trying to kill me. Alright, so it turns out the grove is a little bit of a tourist trap. They have one part you can walk through, but then the actual really nice walking part of the grove. Uh, you have to actually pay to get in and you have to have pay for pictures and pay for a rickshaw to get in there. And it's really short too. It's like just one little stretch and then you're done. Yeah. So mean, it's kind of misleading and like there's this illusion that's just this gigantic growth, but it's just an illusion. It's that. Yeah. I think people <laughs> paint out to be like this huge magical bamboo forest, but honestly, I don't yeah. know if it's really worth it. Still uh, happy we went. We went. We saw it. <laughs> But uh, next time, we'll just go home and take pictures at uh, our bamboo grove. Yes. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Luckily, there's actually a lot of other stuff to do around this area. Mm -hmm. So we're going to explore this area and see what we can find. Mmm, buttery, flaky, and hot. And cheese in the center. They got cheese and meat. It's tasty. Mm -hmm. I mean, despite the bamboo grove being a little bit of a bust, I think that this view right here is worth coming over here. This is only about a minute or two minute walk from the station, and it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. The water combined with the mountaintop view with all the changing colors of the leaves, very nice. Hey, look, we're at the monkey park. You ready, Zofie? Flashbacks. I'm excited though. All 
I honestly was not expecting this to be such an intense hike. So just know if you want to see these monkeys, you're gonna have to work for it. So we are now at the top of the monkey park. It was quite the hike to get up here, but I think it's well worth it. As you can see from the frenzy from feeding time, it was pretty entertaining to watch. Not only that, look at this view behind me. You can see the entire city of Kyoto. So you get a little two for one special by coming up here. So really fun monkey experience. I didn't get a monkey on my head, so it was a plus. All right, we are now at Nijo Castle, which was built in 1603 as the residence of Tokugawa Ieyasu, the first shogunate of the Edo period. Behind us is the actual Nijo Castle Palace. I thought it was very well worth it to go inside. It's eight bucks to go inside, but the amount of history that's inside there, it's kind of like a museum. Mm -hmm. So you take your shoes off and you walk around, you see the different rooms, and they have little descriptions of each room and a little bit of uh, history that they provide about each room and the significance of each room. I thought it was extremely interesting. I agree. I thought it was very educational. You just feel like you're taken back in time mm -hmm. walking through there especially just like the atmosphere, the way it's, even the smell of there. Cause mm -hmm. you can smell all the wood and it's just, everything is just amazing. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Inside the palace, you can't take any pictures or videos, but you can see the entire palace from here. You can see it's really grand, super opulent. All right, we are leaving Nijo Castle now. It's a little bit past five o'clock and we're hungry. And you know what's perfect for a nice rainy day? Some hot ramen. Ramen! So we're gonna go find some ramen. Yay. All right, so that dinner was... So fun. It was hot. It was very hot. <laughs> Fire ramen. Yep. It was quite an experience, you know, dinner and a show. Dinner and a show. We got two bowls of ramen, mm -hmm. uh, gyoza, and some karage chicken and, and fried, fried rice. rice. Yep. So it ended up being uh, 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, 20 bucks a person. 20 bucks each, you get dinner, a show, and you get some content. Because they put your phone up on like a higher level so you can record yourself while the fire is burning your face off. Yeah, and it was very good. Mm -hmm. So after ramen, we decided to go with dessert. And this is one of my favorites, taiyaki fish. So it's like flour on the outside, and uh, the inside has custard cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dig into this. You ate the eyeball. Mm. <laughs> so good. You see the custard coming out? Nice and hot. Perfect. Sweet, but not too sweet. It works really well with the texture of the, the flour, almost like a pancake. Good morning guys, it Good is morning. day three in Kyoto. 
and we are heading over to the Guyon District. It's weird we've been here for three days and we haven't gone to the Guyon District yet. It's one of the most popular areas to walk around. It's got all those traditional vibes of all the buildings, the small sort of streets, and we'll see if we can get some breakfast there. Yes. <laughs> So the other day when we went to Kiyo Mizundera, it was a little bit late to do commuter rentals, but today we're going to go back that way. We're going to find a place to rent some kimonos and take some cool pictures. Woo! Finally! <laughs> So we found a kimono rental spot mm -hmm. and the hardest part is trying to choose which kimono you want. Oh my gosh, there's so many patterns, colors, styles. <laughs> I'll be here for another three hours. And we We're made changed. it. We're changed. She decided to go for a pink and then I matched with a nice navy blue. It matched my navy. And it looks great. <laughs> It can be a little hard to walk in this since uh, you know they have you wearing these uh, these sandals, mm -hmm. but it's comfortable and it party keeps us experience. yeah party experience and it keeps us warm. Uh, yeah. yeah, today is very chilly, so yeah. perfect day to wear it. All right, so we're hoping to take some pretty cool pictures at Kiri Pretty crowded. Oh, we made it a good time. We came here like. 30 minutes ago, it was still crowded, but there was like room to take pictures without people around you. Now it's like sardines. Everyone's on top of you. You go to take a picture and people just like scoot up next to you and are touching your shoulder. And like, let me just take a picture too. Right next to you on top of you. So we're gonna find some spots. It's actually quite comfortable walking around this, you know, it's almost just like a robe. It is a little tight in this area, but overall it's pretty comfortable. How about the shoes? Shoes, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> what are those? <laughs> We're about done with Kiyo Mizutera, and now we are heading out to get some good pictures. We're gonna go find some girls. Yep, yeah, I do. <laughs> First little snack while wearing our kimonos. And this one is the Kyoto beef. There you go. Smells good. Mm. It's starting to get really chilly out. So this is perfect. It's just like a warm, fluffy bun filled with meat on the inside. Really, really good. All right, so we're now on our way to return the kimonos before six o'clock and we're gonna grab some grub. We're honestly fighting for our lives going down this slope with these shoes on. Yeah, the shoes, it's like digging into my toe gap <laughs> there. Mm. Alright, we're down in the sheep's market. Let's see what good grub we can find. Plenty, and I can smell it. Alright, so we've got soy sauce glazed octopus skewer as well as a shrimp skewer, both four bucks each. So let's go in on the uh, octopus first. Mm. Ah, good. Salty, chewy. Got that nice octopus flavor. Very good. That's going on the shrimp. Oh, it's nice. 
Nice and tender. Smooth. And that soy sauce being uh, torched by that flame gives that nice kind of smoky flavor. So good. So the weird thing about Nishiki Market is it seems like things close so early. Close at like six. Like six, six thirty. Things are like closing down. Like what's going on there, man? So if you want anything, you come here early. Yeah. So we got a couple things, but we're gonna we're gonna go somewhere else to find food. Yeah. <laughs> So we're at a happy pancake in Kyoto, and we're gonna get some fluffy pancakes. We ordered the berry ones, and so what the fluffy pancakes are, they're essentially just extra, extra fat and fluffy versions of a regular pancake. I don't know what it is, but people go nuts for them. We have one place close to us in uh, Florida, two hour wait every time you go. Line out the door, they go crazy. So. We're here in Kyoto trying it out for the first time, and I'm super excited. Where's my pancakes? I want my pancakes. So our pancakes just got here, and they look so beautiful. It's so fluffy and thick. A little jiggle. I'm so excited. They smell like pancakes, which, I mean, I expected that. But I don't know which side should I start on. This side or this side? This side? Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my gosh. It, just, it's, it falls apart like a cheesecake, kind of. Super, super soft. Oh wow. All right, let's put in some sauce, some jam, some, oh, I think that's the cheese, and then a little whipped cream. Here we go. Oh wow. Mm. That's a dream. <laughs> That's a dessert dream. Literally, I love sweet, and this is hitting the spot. We came here with a job to do, and we got it done. Look at that. It's dead. So we got a pretty late start this morning. Didn't get out of the hotel until about 10.30. But now we found ourselves at Ho Ho Hoza, which is a omu rice restaurant that specializes in curry omu rice. So here in front of me, I have the their classic pork omu rice. And Sophie had got the chicken omu rice with tomato. Super excited for this. Took my first bite. This is so good. The curry is so rich, savory, slight, slight sweetness to it. And the pork in here, good amount of fat, not too much, and is so nice and tender. You can tell they've cooked it for a really long time. Mix that with the rice and the egg. This is perfect. Mm, so good. And then mine was kind of like a Mexican omelet. Super, super delicious. It had a nice amount of spice. So I got a crispy and fluffy toast with saku jam and a soy milk based spread. Saku is essentially just orange, and the spread is mostly consisting of like the orange peel. Super citrusy, but it has like that bitterness to it too from the peel. And I already took a bite of it, as you can see. Super, super creamy. The spread mixed with the citrus is just a perfect combo. Super light, but still delicious. Mm. 
Yep. To the right of us is the Kamo River. This is the river that flows right through Kyoto and the ones you always see in animes. Hey, they get their lunch, they eat on the riverbank, and there's always a beautiful sunset. And then maybe a scene where they're confessing their love. I don't know, but <laughs> really cool. Cool to see it in real life. It's crazy because we've been here for a few days and we still haven't really walked along the river. Maybe because it's a little bit cold out, so, you know, at nighttime, a lot of people like to sit on the river. Mm -hmm have a little snack or something, but it's a little bit chilly at night. Cool. So we're walking it during the day. Yeah, we're Florida rats. <laughs> this is too cold, but we're still gonna enjoy it. She's a freaking adrenaline junkie. Parkour, parkour. So today is our last day in Kyoto and we have a couple of things left on our itinerary. First we're going to be going to the Kyoto Imperial Palace and then we're going to head up north to Kikakuji Temple. Kikakuji Temple! It's freaking raining now. <laughs> the forecast is failed now, right? This is zero percent! And we already bought two umbrellas and I didn't put, put them in my backpack. Zero percent! Zero percent! So now we're probably gonna go to 7 Eleven and grab a One more. Grab another umbrella. So, scratch that. We didn't get an umbrella from 7 Eleven. We didn't need it. We ended up just hopping on a bus and going to Kinkakuji Temple first before doing the Imperial Palace. That way, we could uh, wait out the rain a little bit. And since the rain was also going south, we wanted to go more north to get out of the rain. So, here we are walking our way up to Kinkakuji Temple first. Our plan worked. <laughs> In the early 1400s, a shogun made this his retirement villa, and upon his death, he wanted it to become a Zen temple. This temple is most well known for having gold-plated leaves covered all along the first two stories. It's a pretty cloudy day today, but if it were sunny, it would be beaming off that rooftop. All right, so we lived in Takuji. And we also made a mistake, we realized, because the Kyoto Imperial Palace closes at 3.20. So our massive plan it didn't, was a bust. Yeah, it didn't go as planned. But well, it's okay. That's okay. We've seen a lot of temples. So now we're back to the main uh, Kyoto area, and we're having an early dinner at Yukatsu. This is something that I've been wanting to try. I had a friend who went to Japan earlier this year, and he kept saying that this is one of his favorite places that he went to. So we're going to check it out. Alright, so we're now inside Gyokatsu. We only waited about 10 minutes to get inside. And we quickly ordered. We ordered two sets of the Japanese beef sirloin set. It comes with rice, a uh, raw egg, sauces, all these accoutrements. And I'm super excited to see what we get. So it's out and I'm super excited. So they got beer, the cabbage. I've got my gyokatsu, a Japanese radish, some wasabi on the side, a little curry sauce, what they call an onsen egg, a little raw egg. They've got a dashi sauce, a little salt and pepper mix, another soy sauce mix, a little white rice, and some miso soup. So I am so ready to dig in. The meat comes medium rare and they have a little little stone pot grill on the side that you can grill if you want, but you don't have to because everything is already cooked to perfection. All right, let's dig in. This 
beef is so good, so nice and tender. And the breading on it is so thin, but provides that nice crispy texture in your mouth. So good. Everything was so delicious. Everything was so good. I'm a big sauce guy, so them having all these different sort of sauces you can dip your meat in was the best. So if you're hungry, you're a big sauce guy, and you like beef, come check out Gyokatsu. Alright, so we just finished dinner and we're on the hunt for dessert and we're in the Shinkyo Goku. And we got some baby casillas. They're essentially just like these. I don't know why we keep doing it, but we keep going for like fluffy pancake kind of things. But it's essentially just fun little uh, fluffy bread. That's exactly what it is. Very light, sweet, and fluffy. Mm. What do we got here? We have, I don't know what they're called, but they're just like a glazed strawberry. And it's similar to the candy apples where they're like, it's like a hard glass glaze on the outside. Candy strawberries. It's like a candy apple. So the outside is literally like hard glass candy, but it just, it's super brittle and it falls apart in your mouth. And then it's just like, starts to melt with the heat of your uh, of your mouth, but really, really sweet. And then the strawberry on the inside is like super ripe, really sweet. This is my second one. I love these things. They're so good, so delicious. So this is only 500 yen, which is about 350. I think it's well worth the treat. Nice sweet treat and dinner. All right, so we're walking along the street and we come across this display. They all look really nice, delicious, nice sweets, great things. And then they kind of start to get worse and worse the more you look at them. And then we got fried pork cutlet parfait. You want some ice cream <laughs> with your whipped cream and pork? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to see, I understand the french fries because I love dipping french fries in like a milkshake or whipped cream. But this is just a little too much How about a to corn? have it as like a meal. How about a corn dog parfait? Yeah. Oh, no, thank you. Okay, okay. I was joking about that being the last one. This is the last one. You always have to finish off with matcha ice cream. Look at how beautiful they look though. Oh, there's just something so refreshing and delicious about matcha. Light, but so flavorful at the same time. All right, so the last thing we're doing tonight and to round off our stay in Kyoto is to visit Yasaka Shrine. Okay, so if you remember, we actually visited Yasaka Shrine during the day yesterday, mm -hmm. and now we, we're visiting it at night. And we're visiting it at night now, and I, honestly, I think it's better at night. Much, much better. All the lighting, the lamps, and everything—it looks much prettier mm -hmm. than it did before during the day. So for this shrine specifically, definitely visit at night. And it's also not as crowded, not mm -hmm. nearly as crowded. So oh, that's yeah. another reason to come here at night. So unfortunately, tonight is our last night in Kyoto. We've been here for four full days, and I think it's enough. I think uh, that two to three days is a sweet spot, especially if you're trying to like get through a bunch of things. You can fit them in two or three days. Yeah, a lot of times we didn't really start our day super early. We mm -hmm. would wake up kind of late and take our time mm -hmm. and then uh, go about our itinerary for the day. And I think it's because we had four days, so we knew that, mm -hmm. hey, we can take our time and relax a little bit. Because usually we're kind of like, go, 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 wake up super early mm -hmm. and spend all day just doing everything we want to do. So Yeah, but if you have a pretty tight schedule, I think you could easily do this in two to three days. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite part about uh, Kyoto? Kyoto, definitely wearing the kimonos. And I loved all the shopping on the really mm -hmm. narrow streets. They're my favorite. They look super mm. cute. And I just love seeing the long, long halls of all the shops of restaurants mm. and shopping. And they're so cute. I love those. Those are my favorite. For me, yeah, I think Nishiki Market was fun. Mm -hmm. Going to all the different food stalls and just grabbing a couple quick bites here and there. Mm -hmm. And then also the Fushimi Nari Shrine, mm. seeing all the red Tori gates. Perfect, perfect uh, hike up the mountain. Plus, 
you get to take some pretty cool pictures up there. Yeah, I forgot about that. I love yeah. that place too. Yeah. Everything was really pretty. I think Kyoto in general is very, um, I love the mix between the old and the new. So it's kind of like feels like old traditional Japan mm. mixed in with like kind of the newer mm. modern Tokyo. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why people come here, right? Mm -hmm. They want to feel that traditional type of vibe. It's kind of the old mixed with the new. So I think that's one of the biggest reasons why people come to Kyoto. Mm -hmm. In the past week, we've been to Tokyo and Hakone. So if you haven't seen those videos, I'll drop a link in the description below. And then after this, we're gonna be heading out to Osaka, Hiroshima, and then back to Tokyo. We'd appreciate if you drop us a like and subscribe for more Japan content to come. Catch you guys on the next one. Arigatou gozaimasu. Sayonara. <laughs> we just made a mess all over the floor. It's all over my face. Oh man. You need a napkin. <laughs> Next up, we got a crab leg. It was also 500 yen. Roughly 300. Next up, we got a crab leg. Also $500. And we put a little bit of the, um, like a spicy sauce on it. Alright, wait. Behind me is Toji Gochunoto. Behind me is Toji Gochunoto, which is the largest pagodo in. Uh, Behind me is Toji Gojinoto, which is the largest pagoda. Behind me is Toji Gojinoto, which is the largest wooden pagoda in Japan. Ranging, no, not ranging. Behind me is Toji Gojinoto, which is the tallest wooden pagoda in Japan. Standing at a whopping 57 meters tall. <laughs> My God. All right, we are now at Nijo Castle, which was built in 1603. Uh, in... All right, now we are at Nijo Castle, which was the residence of the... All right, we are now at Nijo Castle, which was built in 1603 as the residence of Tokugawa Ieyasu, the first shogunate of the Edo period, in six, starting in... I mean, I had it, and then... I, I got a crispy, fluffy toast with a saku jam, and... Okay. The citrus or the jam is like a citrus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I could never be reborn. <laughs> so if you like beef, you're a big sauce guy. What am I? <laughs> right, we'd appreciate if you drop us a like and subscribe for more Japan content to come. Forty one, forty two, forty three, forty four, forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Baby girl, love my bop and I like me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through.